Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first of a series of three webinars, which I'm doing in the format of live Facebook videos. If you're watching this now, it's because you're watching later, probably, rather than live, and that's fine. You'll be able to get a lot of benefit and value from these videos whether you watch them live or whether you watch them recorded. <clears throat> and the purpose of these videos is to help people at this time to, to do something which is really very important for us, but it's also at this moment in time happening whether we like it or not. <laughs> We're being squeezed and a lot of energy, a lot of emotion, a lot of old buried feelings are being kind of squeezed out of us by not only by the, the not only by what's going on in our society at the moment, which is kind of insane, <laughs> but also because energetically there is something very powerful happening to this planet at the moment is going through a phase which it goes through every now and then not very often it's a very big powerful portal that is opening so to speak and we're being squeezed and really you could say that the energetic shifting is what is causing the societal changes in a way so to those of you that are watching now live thank you for joining I'm going to get started fully uh, when a few more people have joined. So just take the time now, if you would, to leave a, a like or a love heart, preferably, and uh, say hello, or leave a comment. And if you could share it as well, if you feel that this will be value of value to people that you know, then share it with them now. Um, as I was saying a moment ago, the purpose of this series of three live videos which i'll be doing today tomorrow and friday at the same time is to really support you in the process that you are undoubtedly already going through which is a big emotional and energetic release humanity is in the cauldron at the moment in the fire and we're being squeezed and a lot of stuff is coming out of us and it's not easy for most people to know what to do with it or how to do it and so that's the purpose of these videos and um this first one today now will be about identifying and releasing energetic blockages that have prevented us from expressing certain emotions you may know that you find it difficult to express anger slash rage slash hatred slash annoyance slash frustration slash irritation those five or six emotions feelings relate to they really come under one umbrella which i will go into tomorrow when we do the video on releasing anger and rage you may feel you may know that you find it difficult to express those feelings and many people alive today have a great difficulty expressing those kinds of feelings, anger. And there's a specific reason for this. And we'll go again, we'll go more into that tomorrow. And on Friday in the third video, we will look at grief, sadness and pain, the, the expression of those feelings. And again, many people alive today are very blocked in the expression of pain and grief and sadness again there's a specific reason for it and on friday we'll be releasing those feelings the purpose of today's video is to release whatever it is that may block us may have been blocking us all this time from expressing our rage our anger from expressing our grief which we have the right to do as human beings as sovereign beings we're given these emotions for good reason there's no emotion and there's no feeling that you can ever feel that hasn't got a good reason behind it. 
In other words, that isn't justified. It's justified. It's righteous. Whether it's hatred, whether it's deep, deep pain, whatever it is that you have inside of you, it's there for a reason and it's a good reason. I'm just going to wait a little bit longer for a few more people to join. Good morning, Kim, Carlos, Fernanda, Yana. Again, just take this moment, if you would, to share this with anyone that you feel might be of benefit. You can share it on your wall. Say hello, leave a comment. <clears throat> if you've got any questions already, then that's what the comment section is for, primarily. I'll wait for a few more people to join before I get started. Let me see this. <clears throat> okay. okay, so the most important thing at this point in time is your intention. You are a magical being, not a sack of meat and bones. That's just the vehicle that you drive around in, in this lifetime. You are a magical, energetic, sovereign being. And this is something that we've been made to forget, unfortunately. As a magical, energetic being, your intention, the degree to which you are intentional, is probably the most important factor in everything that you do. So what I would like you to do right now is to take a little bit of time to consider, contemplate, your relationship to your emotions and your feelings and your energy. Contemplate and reflect upon specifically your relationship to fear, your relationship to anger, rage, hatred, annoyance, irritation, frustration, and your relationship with grief slash sadness slash pain. Look at the patterns throughout your lifetime that exist with these, with your relationship with these feelings, these emotions, these energies, and then make a make a decision, make a choice, which is the most powerful thing we can do as human beings. Make a choice, make a decision, set an intention. When your intention is strong, then magic happens. For many of us, the problem is that we never become fully intentional. We have vague desires, dreams, ideas, but we don't give ourselves permission to really choose deeply, intentionally, what we want to do, what we want to experience, how we want to live. So what I'm suggesting right now is that you take some time, contemplate your relationship with your emotions and your feelings, and set the intention to well, I don't know what your intention will be, but it'll be something like, I choose to fully and finally 
release these stuck emotions, these blocked emotions and everything that has been blocking them until now. It might be to reclaim your power because really that is the ultimate purpose behind this particular work. The stuck energies and the blocked emotions and feelings in the body disconnect us from our power. Which of course is why this situation exists. Is it looking? Sorry. Okay. Okay. So there we go. So Kimber is kindly summarizing what has come before in this video in the comments. So if you're feeling a bit lost, you're not sure what's going on, maybe you've just joined, have a look at the comments, look for Kimber Robs, and you'll find uh, summary. So I'm going to begin now by talking a little bit and sharing the, the knowledge that I have about specifically about trauma and about energy and about feeling and emotion and about the body and about how these things are all interconnected. The goal, the aim of this series of videos is to help you to, to go through a process known as animal body expression. This is what I call it, animal body expression. And the, the idea behind animal body expression is that we're human beings, yes, And the body that we're in is an animal body. It's made of the same stuff that all the animals are made of, hair, flesh, blood, bone. It makes the same kind of sounds that the animals can make. It has instincts like animals have. It needs food, water, oxygen, like other animals. We're animals at least partly what we are as human beings is animalistic. However, one of the biggest problems that we have in modern society is that we've become completely separated from our animal nature, separated. A thousand years ago, all of our ancestors all over the globe, pretty much were having a spiritual relationship with nature shamanistic, pagan, druidic relationship, spiritual relationship with nature. And over the last couple of millennia, we've lost touch with that. And not by accident. If you think about the witch hunts, which went on for seven or 800 years throughout the world, what was happening was that systematically the people who held, who carried that medicine, that spiritual connection, that, that law, those people were exterminated after being tortured. And that way of life was systematically attacked and destroyed. What's happened more recently is that science has become the new religion. And 
instead of believing as they did a few hundred years ago that there was a man with a long white beard on a cloud and you had to go to church and pray now we look to science for all the answers and all the answers are not to be found in science all the answers are to be found right here in our bodies when we allow our bodies to be as they are could you give me some socks thank you now most men in our society today are and this is a generalization of course but most men are very disconnected from their body's ability to process and integrate and express grief sadness and pain partly because we've been trained and conditioned and sort of programmed to be men macho men super men action men and most women have have the same problem with anger generalizing but true a lot a lot of women have a great deal of trouble expressing anger or rage or hatred or irritation or frustration or annoyance and the reason for this is because there is an energetic barrier and of course it could be the other way around there are plenty of men that have problems expressing anger and there are plenty of women that have problems expressing grief and pain and there are plenty of people that are completely blocked from all emotion numb numb frozen feeling very little but almost all of us to some extent or the other have issues with our emotions and our feelings and the expression of them where we want to get to with this work is where we can spontaneously in the moment feel and express whatever emotion or feeling is coming up as a response to whatever environmental stimulus is provoking it. As I said at the beginning of the video, all emotion is justified. There is no such thing as an overly emotional person, even though you may have been uh, led to believe that you are overly emotional or that your emotions are a problem or that you don't know how to, how to handle them and so on. There's no such thing as an unjustified emotion. All emotion and all feeling has, has, a, has a, a proper cause and is justified. So where we want to get to, the, the goal of this work is where our animal body can freely and spontaneously express whatever emotion or feeling is arising in the moment. And to get there, we need to release all of the old, stuck, stale emotions and energies from the body. It's a little bit like if you imagine um, the, a house with a plumbing system and it's got pipes everywhere and sewage and water pipes and so on and some of them are blocked imagine the heating system radiators central heating and the heating is not getting through because there are air bubbles there are blockages in the pipes so what we do with this work is we clean out the pipes <laughs> so to speak release the air bubbles so that the heat can come through so that the fresh emotion can come through and when we do this, as I said earlier, we come into much greater 
more direct contact with our freedom and our power. Because we cannot be free in our bodies when our bodies are stuck and blocked and frozen and numb. Then we are inhibited by that frozenness. So one of the main reasons for doing this work is to free up the body so that we can then be who we want to be, be who we are and express what we need to express and do what we would choose to do. Until we release this emotion, then we are limited, deeply, deeply limited. Now, scientists, zoologists specifically, and biologists have observed for a long time, it's very well known, that trauma is stored in the body. And wild animals, after a traumatic experience, assuming that they survive, go through a process known as releasing, or rather completing, completing the trauma. And what this usually looks like is shaking. The body shakes, jerks, thrashes around, um, and makes these kind of spontaneous movements. And sound, vocal sound, like howling, or wailing, or screaming, or barking, or roaring. And our bodies are designed to do the same thing. Our animal bodies function in the same way. If you go through a big trauma, that energy gets stuck in the body. And later, what needs to happen for us to be healthy and to heal the trauma and move beyond it, taking the lessons that we can learn from it, and thus growing and evolving and developing, we need to go through a similar process. And it's not intellectual, it's not logical or rational, it's primal, physical, biological, and instinctual. So your head, <laughs> your head throughout this process is really the enemy, because your head might try to get in the way. You might start thinking about it. You might start worrying about what people are going to think if they hear you making these noises or if they see you making these movements. And if, that's, if that is what is happening, if you find that you can't access these feelings, emotions and energies in the body because you keep going up into the head, then there is an energetic blockage like the air bubble in the pipe Something is preventing you from pushing through deeper into the body. And instead, you're bouncing up into the head. This is very common. And this is the purpose of this one live video. This is what we're addressing. The, the blockages that prevent us from getting deep into the body. If you're just joining and you're not sure what's going on, then Kimba Robs is um, kindly uh, summarizing some of what I'm saying in the comments so you can catch up there. Okay, so a little bit about trauma now. Trauma is an experience that makes us feel unsafe. Basically, simplest definition feeling not safe and trauma is a very good thing we need to understand that trauma is not only valuable to us but it's also unavoidable and when trauma is lived through and processed and integrated we grow no trauma very little growth in our lives very little evolution in our lifetime and collectively so trauma is not the problem Trauma is not the enemy. The problem is that sometimes we don't get the opportunity to process the trauma, and so it gets stuck inside of us. And then you can say that we're then you can say that you're traumatized. <laughs> then you are living a life that is an expression of ongoing trauma. And that is what defines humanity in 2020 and explains almost everything that is happening in the world today.
I'm not going to go deeply into that. The problem arises when we're not able to complete the trauma. And most importantly, most specifically, if we're able to resist the trauma by either fighting or fleeing, fight or flight response, then we're going to be okay because we would have created a neural pathway that says that was scary. I didn't feel safe, but I managed to keep myself safe by fighting back against it or by getting away and I'm good. However, there is a third response that our bodies have to trauma which is what the body does when it cannot fight back and it cannot flee. When we can't resist or get away from what's happening and we continue to feel unsafe, then usually what happens is that our body freezes in some way or another. And it could be feeling numb. It could be a total paralysis. It could be feeling frozen. It could be shutting down. It could be disassociating. There's a number of ways in which we freeze, but let's just simplify all of that and call it the freeze instinct for now. When we freeze in response to a trauma, then we need to release the freeze instinct from our body at a later date, just as the gazelle does when it's been hunted by the, by the lion and it escapes and then his body shakes and writhes and bucks and these sounds come out like barking and, and howling and roaring. That is the energy of the trauma being released from the body of the gazelle. And our bodies are the same. We need to release trauma. Now, to illustrate why and how we get these energetic blockages that prevent us from accessing our emotions, from accessing our feelings and releasing them. I'm going to share a personal story. Uh, when I was about six years old, my life kind of went, took a big nosedive. I had been very safe, very happy, and I won't go into details, but at the age of six, everything flipped on its head. And I found myself in a very uh, hostile situation, very, um, scary and my my caretakers were not able to recognize what was happening for me because they were also having a very difficult time because i loved them and because i felt at that age that i was very powerful i made a decision and the decision that i made was that i would deal with my stuff i would deal with my pain i would deal with my fear and I decided not to tell the people that were looking after me. And at that moment in time, I created a pattern that went on for decades, whereby I was unable to share my grief, my pain and my sadness with anybody else, because I had decided that I would do that all on my own. In other words, I was experiencing trauma that I couldn't get away from, that I couldn't fight back against. Had I been able as a child to share this, to, to speak this to the adults that were around me, I would have been able to process and to release. But I made a conscious decision. I will contain this. And so I did. I contained all of that emotion, all of that feeling for decades. So finally, I realized what was going on and I did what we're going to do now. <laughs> and I was able to start releasing it. Okay, just going to check some of these comments. Estella, I must have tuned in at the right moment. Really resonate with what you're saying. I'll watch the full video later. Dog is acting. Good. It takes a lot of courage to meet your own emotions even more to express them. It changes you and your life. Yes, it does. It takes a lot of courage. It takes courage. Um, which is why most people never do it. And it's such a shame because once you integrate these things, once you process them, 
you literally transform your consciousness and you transform the possibility that you have to have a really fulfilling, rewarding, beautiful life. Karina asks, is death a trauma? No, death is not a trauma. Um, death is the release from trauma. Carlos, free your body and balance the soul to reach peace, love, trust, and respect. Jennifer says, thank you. I think I must have made that pact with myself too. Yeah. A lot of us made these pacts. A lot of us made these pacts. Another example is if you go back a few hundred years when people were quite religious and most people in the West were Christian or Catholic and were being told by the authority figures, the church figures, the, the, the Pope and the, the bishops and so on and the clergy were being told that sexuality <clears throat> was evil, sinful, that it was an aberration and that you could go to hell even just for touching yourself sexually. Many people at those times made a decision to cut themselves off from their sexuality and if these things are not healed in us, they get handed down generation after generation. And again, this has been scientifically proven now, intergenerational trauma is a thing. So. If you have children and you don't do this work on yourself, then they will have to do it or your grandchildren will have to do it. And that's how it goes. Natalie says also very difficult to find a place to be able to roar and scream without getting arrested. Yeah. As crazy as that is, it's true. We're not allowed to use our voices in public. Okay. Let's get started on this. So we can't let that stop you now. What's it? We can't let that stop you. Yeah, yeah. Kimber's saying, Kimber, you want to come in and just come in? <clears throat> this is Kimber, also an expert on healing trauma and going mm -hmm. through going through the work that needs to be done to become free and empowered. So yeah, Natalie, Natalie said it's very difficult to find a place to be able to roar and scream without getting arrested. You see, the reason we're so inhibited, it's not, it's not just that we're human beings are stupid or something, you know, this has been done to us systematically over thousands of years. And at this moment in time, humanity is very disempowered. The reason why I do the work I do in especially this series of three videos is because I really want to empower people. And it is useful to understand that it's not an accident that we're disempowered at this moment in time. It's not an accident that we're completely cut off from our animal body nature and from our emotions and from our feelings and from our, the energy that flows through us. It's been done to us for a long time. I mentioned the witch hunts, I mentioned the Vatican, uh, we could talk about the education system and uh, I don't want to go too much into it, but understand this, you have the right to express whatever you want to express. As long as you're not hurting, as long as you're not doing unnecessary violence, deceit or theft, you're free to do whatever you want. And using your voice to scream, to roar, to shout, moving your body in any way that you want, including being naked, is your birthright as a child of God. And nobody, no man, no woman, no being or entity has any right or any authority to tell you otherwise. So Natalie's comment that it's difficult to find a place to be able to roar and scream. We all have this inhibition, you know, we all don't want other people to hear us being wild and crazy and letting go of control and being a bit out of control. But that's something that that's another energetic barrier that prevents us from being ourselves and expressing what we need to express in order to be free and empowered. Giselle says, yeah, it's not even acceptable to sing in the open. Yeah. I mean, 
sing in the open, please. You know, if we all start singing in the open, then things will change. Okay. So before we begin the process that we're going to do, I have to make a little caveat. I have to um, qualify everything that I'm going to say. It's this video today is about releasing energetic blockages. In other words, blockages in our energy body, which are also in our physical body as tension, that prevent us from expressing. Tomorrow's video and Friday's video will be different. Tomorrow's video and Friday's video will be about expressing those emotions for those that are able to and have moved beyond the blockages. What I share with you tomorrow and what I share with you on Friday are tools that you can take and run with relatively easily. Almost everybody, I think, that watches the videos tomorrow, once they freed themselves of the energetic blockages that prevent this expression, everybody will be able to use the tools that I share to release the emotion in a very, very powerful way. However, the work that we're doing today to release the energetic blockages that at the moment are blocking us is more complex. It's possible to do it on your own. All healing is self-healing. It's, it's always possible, but it's much more complex and it can be very, very difficult for people because essentially what we're doing is we're looking for something that has been unconscious until now. This one is about healing trauma. Tomorrow's videos will be about releasing the energy and the emotion that got blocked from the trauma. Today is about healing trauma. And I have to say that, first of all, I am not responsible for what you do with the information that I share with you now. Of course, it's your responsibility. You are your responsibility. I'm very clear on that. And, Not that there's any danger here. I'm absolutely, I, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this video, okay? But it's more difficult to find the unconscious response that you had to a traumatic situation. And usually, not always, but usually we need help, especially if we want to do it without it taking years, you know? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that if you get stuck with what I'm sharing with you in this video, you can come back and watch it again. Uh, you can keep thinking about and practicing the tools that I'm sharing with you, but you may find that you want to work with someone that is specialized in doing this work so that you can release quickly and easily these blockages and then go and do the animal body expression work that I share with you tomorrow and Friday on your own relatively quickly and relatively easily. Sonia Rose, all of the primal ways I want to express myself yet scared of someone else seeing or hearing me. Yeah. How many at the moment? Yeah. I'll just share a quick little story. There's a wonderful book which I highly recommend to anybody that hasn't read it. It's called The Continuum Concept. I'm going to write it as a comment. The Continuum Concept by Jean Lee Love. She was a woman that lived, one of the first people that went to the Amazon jungle from the West, and she lived with a tribe. And she shares this story. She was living with this very native indigenous tribe in the jungle. And every, every now and then, maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks, there was a man, an old man, that lived in one of the huts, one of the mud huts in the jungle. And every now and again, he would come out of his hut and he would walk up the hill a little bit, just, just maybe a hundred meters up above the village. He would take a little drum with him and he would stand there for a few hours, banging the drum, kind of manically and screaming screaming at the top of his lungs, at the top of his voice, beating this drum, screaming at the top of his lungs. And 
the woman who wrote the book made the observation and this is the point of the story that everybody in the village just carried on they didn't bat an eyelid it was almost like nothing out of the ordinary was happening because nothing out of the ordinary was happening <laughs> because it's ordinary it's normal that we need to express ourselves life is painful life is difficult we're all going to die one day we're all afraid and you know we need to be able to navigate this life expressing ourselves in the way that that man perhaps came out of his heart banged the drum screamed at the top of his lungs so yes there is this societal stigma towards deep powerful personal expression even singing you know but especially animal expression like roaring howling wailing shrieking and the physical expressions that go along with that kind of vocal expression but you know there are many things in our society that are messed up and we sooner or later as individuals we need to see them and we need to say to ourselves i don't care i don't care that this is a stigma i don't care that this is a taboo this is a direction that i'm going in because i know it's good for me okay karina is saying can you please give more examples of trauma yeah okay so trauma can of course be something very violent like a car accident or a rape i should say a violent rape because there are many rapes that are seemingly not violent trauma is anything that makes you feel unsafe and if something makes you feel unsafe at a deep level then you can you can call it trauma trauma can be very subtle and the most widespread trauma that affects humanity today in this day and age because in different ages we have experienced different kinds of trauma these days for us in the west the trauma of profound poverty and starvation is something that most of us have never even come close to experiencing but all of our ancestors did the trauma of thirst not having good water to drink is something that most of us have never experienced but our ancestors did in today's day and age the most widespread trauma is the trauma of neglect neglect as in the example that i gave earlier when i was six years old and i was going through an incredible amount of difficulty and pain and trauma and nobody noticed you know the adults who you would hope would be paying attention out of a sense of responsibility to the children were not and so i as well as everything I was going through at a very deep level, I felt that I wasn't loved. And the truth is that when people are able to love their children, they see what's going on, you know, but most of our parents were not able to love us fully because they were not able to love themselves. And the result of that is that we felt at a very deep level, unlovable. And at a deeper level, we felt unsafe. Why? Because for the whole of human evolution up until very recently, like now, the safety of a human child absolutely depended upon adults paying attention. You know, if you zoom back, if you go back a couple of thousand years to a tribe, living in the jungle or living in the mountains or living in the hills or living wherever there were wild animals that were dangerous there were the weather could be dangerous other tribes could be dangerous dangerous eating poisonous foods could be dangerous so children had to be paid attention to in a certain way and so our bodies have been programmed by this evolutionary truth the truth that our safety as babies and as children depends upon people paying attention to us 
And the extent to which we are paid attention to when we're younger is the extent very much to which we feel safe and secure as children. And when I say paying attention, it doesn't mean like a helicopter parent, you know, like fussing and paying too much attention. It means just seeing. Children need to be seen, need to be heard, need to be acknowledged, simply need to feel that they're loved, that the adults love them and therefore take care of them. And without that understanding, without that feeling in the body, I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm acknowledged, I'm loved, there is no feeling of safety. And this is the most widespread and damaging trauma in 2020 today. Almost all of us have been affected by it on some level. I'd say 99% of people, at least 90% of people. So trauma can be violent. Trauma can be obvious car accident, for example, but it can be very subtle. It can be growing up in an environment where nobody expresses their emotions. <laughs> Nobody's expressing their emotions, or maybe nobody expresses anger, or maybe everybody over expresses anger. You know, there are many, many different examples of, of trauma and almost anything can be traumatic. The thing that you need to understand is that it's a good thing. Trauma is a good thing. When it's processed, we grow from it. We develop, we become stronger as in what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. The problem arises when we can only freeze in response to the trauma. We're not able to fight, we're not able to flee, we freeze. And then we're not able to release that freeze mechanism. And that's what today is all about. Identifying the freeze mechanism, when it happened, where it happened, how it happened, and releasing it. Diane says, I feel that adults need that same safety, but who to turn to well you see this is the thing and this is why we're doing this work now if when we were children the grown-ups had been paying attention had been able to love properly then we would have a feeling of safety inside of us now it would have been given to us by the environment that we grew up in by the community by the family and safety is the absolute foundation of human experience it's not uh, something that we should aspire to, <laughs> you know, it's the minimum that is necessary for health and for a functional life, the minimum. And if you're familiar with the chakra system, safety is the root chakra, root. So people that are, and this is almost all of us, people that are deeply traumatized are stuck on the first rung of the ladder, stuck at the absolute beginning of the path unable to free ourselves from that basic search for safety. Second chakra is freedom. Third chakra is power. Fourth chakra is love. So we're very far away from love when we're stuck in the root chakra. And this work is about freeing up those blockages so that we can feel free to express the second chakra, to be creative. Then, release our power in the solar plexus to become truly powerful sovereign human beings and then to activate the heart fully so that we can be even more powerful than power because love is the power that overcomes all power natalie says and our parents telling us to shut up when we're crying and stop making a racket when we're screaming yes yes you know we we were stopped when we were children very very early from expressing our sexuality from expressing our fear from expressing our grief from expressing our rage from expressing ourselves and that 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 what what do you call that that suppression that was done to us and that we ended up also doing to ourselves 
locks us into the root chakra and prevents evolution, prevents growth, prevents development. Look, most adults, sorry to say this, but it's true. Most adults, most people that are big grown ups that look mature like adults walking around in like 20 year old, 30 year old, 40 year old, 50 year old, 60, 70, 80, 90 year old bodies are emotionally retarded. We're all of us emotionally retarded. And this work is about growing up. This is not spiritual, what we're doing now. Spirituality is, you know, when you get to the fourth chakra and the fifth and the sixth and the seventh, the higher centers of consciousness. That's, that's spirituality, the way I see it. This work in the root chakra and the second and the third chakra, the work on safety and freedom and power, this is about being an adult, about growing up, and we're emotionally retarded. So don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> it's just my observation. Don't have to believe it with me. Um, but that's what we're doing. We're working on the root chakra to free the blockages so that we can be free to express ourselves, be in our power. We're going to start doing it soon. But Diane's question, I feel that adults need the same safety, but who do they turn to? They don't. Well, you can turn to a healer, you know, you can turn to elders, you can turn to wise men and women that are in your community for assistance, but ultimately you have to do it yourself. That's the thing. If you were not given something by your parents in your childhood that you should have been given by them, you should have been made to feel safe in an ideal world, but you weren't. So now you've got to do it for yourself. The same with safety, the same with freedom, the same with power, the same with love and self-love. Um, whatever we should have got in our childhood but didn't, it's now only going to be found in one place, and that's within. And we have to take responsibility for that and do the work ourselves. Again, which is why most people don't do it. Luca, hey, do you know or like Gabo Mate view on trauma? Yeah, I love Gabo Mate. Um, I love him. Natalie, so much deep wisdom in this. So many light bulb moments. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. And feel free to share it. Okay. So let's get to the nitty gritty now. Okay. So. As I said earlier, the first thing I want you to do is to really become intentional about this work. Now, you can do it in any number of ways. You can do it half-heartedly, you know, you can do it with a strong intention, you can do it without any intention, you can do it in fits and spurts, but if you so choose, then today, and we're April 2020, there is the opportunity to release all of your shit, all of your stuff, all of your trauma, all of your blocked and suppressed emotions, to release it all very quickly. It's healthy and it's safe to do so. The reason for this is that energetically, this planet and especially humanity are undergoing a huge shift and awakening process. It's happening now. So if you so choose, if you become deeply intentional about it and you commit yourself to it, then at this moment in time, it is possible to wake up fast. And really the, the difference is in your intention. Okay, so I'm sharing now a bit of text which comes from a five or twelve week courses that I run. And it's about ritual. Okay. What you can do is you can do a ritual for yourself where you set your intention. And by doing this ritual, you call in assistance. 
you can call in assistance from your ancestors you can call in and and understand that when you do this work you're not only healing yourself you're also healing your ancestors and you're healing your descendants both direct and indirect and you're healing the collective consciousness because the collective consciousness is made up of what of all of our consciousness combined so whenever you release stale stagnant toxic emotion whenever you heal trauma whenever you release energetic blockages you do it not only for yourself but you do it for the whole of humanity past present and future so as you do a ritual and we all know our bodies know how to be ritualistic because throughout all of our evolution up until very recently ritual and ceremony was a huge part of human society so the text i'm sharing or i have shared just now uh, in the comments is just a very basic simple guideline for anybody that is not practiced and doesn't have a good strong relationship with their ability to perform ritual you can use that you can get some ideas from that it's not it's not a rule it's a guideline and it's very simple you call in assistance and support from from wherever you want to call it in from you can call in support from the spirits of the seven directions you can call in support from your ancestors you can call in support from your higher self from your spirit guides from whatever you feel or whatever you believe is a support to you and you can do a ritual to create a very strong intention and as i said at the beginning of this video we are magical energetic beings this is a very powerful thing to do and as i said a moment ago the strength of your intention is what defines how successful you will be in this work so if you're sitting here watching this video kind of like you know curious and a bit skeptical okay you're going to get something from it you know but if you decide to really commit to yourself with this work and you become very intentional about it then at this moment in time april 2020 you can do it quickly and fast which is good because there's a sense of urgency in the air at the moment so I'm going to speak very generally because everybody that is listening will have a different story, a different type of blockage. Some people will be completely numb, you know, completely numb, no emotion, no feeling. I've worked with many people like that and helped many people to release this numbness and to feel finally. Um, other people will be will have an issue with anger, can't express anger, only passive aggressively, this is very common. Other people will be blocked in their expression of grief and pain and sadness and sorrow. So you're all different and I have to be very general in the way that I talk this through. I'm trusting that you will take what you need from it, whatever resonates, take it, whatever is useful, take it. Um, if you have questions, ask them in the comments or message us later and apply this information to yourself in the best way that you can and as i said earlier this specific work that we're doing today about healing trauma is a bit tricky and if you need help i'm here or you can work with other uh, healers who are specialized in healing trauma you can do it on your own this stuff that we're doing today but it's much more difficult than the stuff i'm sharing tomorrow and friday okay so so we're looking at trauma. What has happened to all of us is that we have experienced trauma in which the only way we could feel a little bit safer is by shutting down or freezing or disassociating. The example that I gave earlier was when I was six years old, I was experiencing an extraordinary amount of pain isolation loneliness just big big trauma and i decided this pain i deal with it myself deal with it myself i literally created an energetic 
barrier that locked in my pain and my grief and my sadness and my sorrow. And for decades, I was not able to express that. I was barely able to cry, for example, because it was locked in. So what happened in that situation was that everything that I was experiencing that was making me feel unsafe, i.e. trauma, that I couldn't run away from and I couldn't fight back against, I froze. All of that emotion, all of that feeling, all of that energy of trauma in the body, I froze it, I suppressed it, and I locked it in. This was a combination of a biological response, a physical biological response to freeze, to contract, a decision, a mental decision that I made to protect my parents, to contain my stuff, to deal with it myself. And at the same time, at a very, very deep primal level, an association was created in my, in my brain, if you like, uh, an association between safety, safety slash survival on the one hand, and freezing and suppressing on the other hand. Can you just burn some sage? In other words, I was in a particular situation, a lot of pain. I made a decision mentally. I'm not sharing this. I'm dealing with this myself. An association was created between how do I get to feel more safe? How do I survive this trauma on the one hand and freezing on the other? In other words, my brain associated freezing with safety. My safety depends upon freezing because that was the way in which my biology had instinctively reacted to what was happening around me and to me. And no, yeah, but just from there, yeah. So, for you, in your specific situation, whether it's I have a blockage towards anger, or I have a blockage towards grief, or I have a blockage in the expression of fear, what you can do is remember the earliest memory you have in your childhood and it will be in your childhood before the age of 15 probably before the age of 14 and probably before the age of 10 remember when in your childhood did you disconnect from that feeling or that emotion that you're now stuck and blocked at expressing in other words try to identify the earliest point when this pattern began or the earliest part of this pattern that you can remember. So there's a pattern. You're here with the intention to release anger, let's say, to be able to express your anger, your rage, your irritation. You know that there's a pattern. That until now, it's been difficult to get those feelings out, to express them. Go back and look at the pattern. Look at how it affects you now. Look at how it affected you a decade ago. Keep going back. How did it affect you when you were a teenager? Remember the times when you were a teenager and you, you got angry, but you couldn't quite express it. 
and go further back, right back into your childhood and find the earliest memory you have of something making you angry and you didn't quite fully express it. Perhaps you didn't express it at all. Now, don't worry if you can't find the, the right memory. There's no right and wrong here. It's like, um, you know, you, you chop away at it, you chop away at it. Whatever you do with this good intention, with a pure intention, if you have a pure intention to heal yourself for the right reasons, then you don't have to worry about a thing because what you're doing is you're aligning yourself with life. Life always wants to heal, to grow, to become strong, so to be well. And this impulse towards wellness protects us. If you have a good intention, I want to be well, I choose to heal, then the work that you do in that direction will be protected, will be safe. You may not be able to find the earliest memory and that's okay because the pattern of trauma is like a chain with links on it you know link after link after link and all we need to do to heal the ancestral pattern and the whole pattern is cut the chain when you break the chain at one point whether it's when you're six years old or when you're 15 years old doesn't matter you could go back into your ancestry and do it as well. And that's a, that's a whole other video. Wherever you break the chain, the chain is broken. And that energy can no longer flow down the chain generation after generation after generation. So don't worry about finding the perfect memory, the right memory. And what can happen sometimes is that you do this work and you free up a bit of space inside yourself. You heal certain things which then enables you to find things and to heal other stuff that you previously had not been able to. So it's a process. It's a process. When <clears throat> you begin to, to identify the early roots in your lifetime of this pattern, and we're using the example of being blocked at expressing anger, right? So when you notice that, aha, yeah, when I was about eight or nine years old, my father said that to me and it made me so angry, but I didn't say anything to him. I didn't, I just swallowed that anger down. Aha, okay, that's interesting. Then you begin to explore that. Wherever you're at, whether you're nine, or six years old, or three years old, or sometimes people have very, very early life memories. Wherever you come to, where you recognize that that pattern existed then, I want you then to go through the process of diving deeply into that memory. And the most powerful way that you can do that is by pretending that you've gone back in time pretending to be you at that moment in time. So if you were nine years old and your father said something and it made you angry, but you didn't say anything, you say to yourself, you can close your eyes and you can say to yourself, okay, I pretend that I am nine years old. I'm in that situation right now. And you observe the whole process that you went through. you observe how you felt in that moment. And when you identify what that feeling was, then you go a little bit deeper by asking yourself, how does that feeling make me feel? So if, for example, in that moment when your father said that thing, the feeling that it made you feel was angry, that made me feel really angry. Then the next question is, how did that anger make me feel? That anger may, perhaps, as an example, have made you feel 
powerless. Then you do the same thing. How did that feeling of powerlessness make me feel? And you keep asking this question, how does that make me feel? How does that anger make me feel? How does that powerlessness make me feel? Maybe powerlessness made you feel weak. How did weak make me feel? You keep asking this question until you get right into the root of a deep feeling like weak or powerless or whatever it is. And then you observe how your body reacted instinctively to the situation to make you feel a little bit more safe. Angry, powerless, feel weak, I don't feel safe, and my body reacts by contracting. For example, contracting. Maybe it feels like it's shutting down. Maybe you feel a sense of frozenness. Maybe you feel numb. Maybe you feel like you're leaving your body and you're dissociating, just going into your head or even outside of your body completely. These are all variations of the freeze instinct. In other words, to summarize, you look at the pattern. So whatever you're dealing with right now, whether it's anger or grief or fear or whatever, look at the pattern throughout your life. Trace it back as far as you can and look for an early childhood memory, as early as you can find. There's no right or wrong. You just work with what you've got. And if you have a strong intention, a pure intention to heal, then you will get what you need. If you can't remember anything, you don't need it. You can do it without the memory, and I'll come back to that in a moment. When you found the memory that is at the root of the pattern in your lifetime, then you zoom into it. You pretend that you're in that moment now. You close your eyes and you use your imagination. This technique of pretending is extremely powerful, deceptively powerful, because the way it works is that our brains, our minds don't know the difference between pretending and reality. We don't know the difference. I'm not going to go deeply into that, but that's how it works. So you pretend. If it happened when you were six, you say, I pretend I'm six years old and I'm in that situation right now. And then you pretend, you imagine, you pretend, you visualize your six-year-old body, there you are, this is what's happening. Whatever is happening, how does it make you feel? What is the feeling that arises in response to what is happening? If it's sadness, okay, I feel really sad. Next question. How does that sadness make me feel? Maybe it makes you feel alone. Maybe when you're six in that situation, the sadness makes you feel very alone. I feel alone. Allow yourself to feel these feelings fully. Allow yourself to breathe into the situation, to be six years old in that moment. How does being alone in that situation make me feel? So maybe it's something like feel completely disconnected, totally separate. How does that make me feel? Maybe that's as deep as you can go with the feeling. It's a very deep feeling, disconnected and separate. So then what, how is the body reacting? You see, then the body responds to the trauma. If it can't fight, if it can't get away, it freezes. How does the body respond? to this trauma where I feel separate and isolated, and disconnected, it shuts down. And you've isolated then the instinctive way in which your body reacted to the trauma. Once you've got that, now you're good. Then what you do is stop pretending. And I want you to say out loud, when you get to that point, when you're ready to let go of the, of the picture, of the story, of what happened, I want you to say to yourself, I stop pretending now.
And at that point, what you then do is you contemplate for a moment and you recognize the way in which the pattern was created out of that early memory. When I was six, this happened to me. I felt incredibly sad. I felt alone in the whole world. This is the example. I felt a deep sense of disconnection and separation. My body reacted by shutting down or freezing or dissociating or whatever it was that your body did to freeze and be safe in the face of this trauma. Then you heal that trauma and the way you heal it is by acknowledging for yourself what happened. I acknowledge this happened. When I was six years old, this situation happened, this trauma happened. I acknowledge that that happened and I acknowledge what I went through. I acknowledge that I felt deep sadness. I felt incredibly alone and I felt totally disconnected and separate, for example. I acknowledge these feelings in my body. And I acknowledge the way in which my body reacted to this trauma to try to keep me a little bit more safe. I acknowledge that my body froze or contracted or became numb or disassociated. And I acknowledge the association between safety and survival on the one hand and this reaction of freezing or disassociation on the other. I acknowledge the association, the subconscious association between this reaction and safety. I acknowledge that until now I have lived as if freezing or dissociation, disassociation keeps me safe. And in that moment, you can choose to let go of that association, understanding that you can be safe now without freezing or without disassociating, for example. The pattern was necessary in childhood. It did make you feel more safe and you did need that. So you can be grateful for it. It's not like you're trying to get rid of some enemy on your back you're letting go of something that served you greatly but you don't need it anymore it doesn't serve you any longer and it's safe now to live for more than just safety I hope that makes sense. If anybody has any questions, if it doesn't make sense in any way, ask. And as I said earlier, this is a process that is not I've simplified it as much as I can. It can be a little bit more complex than this. And you may need help with it, in which case I advise work with a healer who is skilled and specialized in healing trauma. Um, you can do it yourself. And this information will be very valuable to a lot of people, but some people will need, you know, some support, some assistance and some guidance to go through this process. One of the things that's hard about it is identifying and finding your own unconscious patterns. Because in the moment of trauma, all of this stuff, all of this reaction, the sadness, the feeling alone, the freeze instinct, all of it is almost always quite unconscious. In the moment, all we're aware of is what's happening. We don't notice the internal reactions and so on.
Okay, so Christopher is saying my body is shaking a lot. Is this normal? Yes, be my G, Christopher, that is normal. Um, earlier, shaking is has been observed by scientists and zoologists. Um, it's very well known now that when an animal survives trauma, one of the main things that happens is that its body shakes. So the shaking is the, the body's natural way of releasing the energy, the, the caught up energy of the trauma. So if you find that you're shaking, if you find that you're convulsing, even having fits can simply be your body releasing trauma. And of course, if it happens to you, some of those things can be very scary. You might want to call an ambulance and I'm not a doctor. I'm not trying to give medical advice, but what I'm saying is that sometimes some spontaneous movements, energetic releases happen in the body, which are very healthy and nothing to be afraid of. So be aware that that is what can happen. As it's happening, take the opportunity rather than going into fear. Oh my God, I'm losing control. Am I having a fit? What is going on? Relax. There is nothing to fear. Go deeper into it, breathe and take the opportunity to allow as much as you can out as the body is doing what it does. Let your voice express as well. And this is, we're going to go much more deeply into this tomorrow and on Friday, how to release, how to express. But for now, if you find that you're shaking, if you find that you want to release some energy through your voice, do it. Any questions? I talk about what to do if you don't remember any childhood memories of trauma or of the pattern. So sometimes it's not very common, but sometimes people really have no memory of a childhood um, trauma or of something that is at the root of a pattern like this. And sometimes people say, can you still heal trauma if, even if you can't remember it? And the answer is yes, you can. You do not have to remember what happened in order to be able to heal it. And the reason for that is that what happened and the memory of it is pretty much irrelevant. That's not what we're healing. We can't go back in time and change the past. Well, we can, but that's another story. <laughs> um, but when it comes to healing trauma, you don't need to remember what happened because actually what we're healing is not what happened. What we're healing is how we reacted and how we've continuously been reacting as a result of that. Yep, it's nice if you remember the memory, but it's not necessary. What you can do is simply recognize that there's a pattern Trace it back as far as you can. And instead of working with the memory, you work with the pattern as it arises for you now and as it has arisen for you historically. So for example, you might say, um, I was working with a client the other day and they said uh, they, they wanted to deal with frustration. They were feeling a lot of frustration, which is anger really. And I'm going to talk in detail and in depth about what this really is tomorrow when we do the work on anger. Um, so I was working with a client and rather than look at a childhood memory, we simply worked with what was coming up now because it's a pattern. What you find coming up now is the same thing that came up in the early memory. So you look at what happens. I was with my boss and they, they behave the way they behave and it makes me feel this frustration. So then again, the question is, how does the frustration make you feel? You feel the frustration, you feel the frustration. How does it make you feel? The frustration makes me feel like I want to explode. Okay. 
feel that you want to explode how does that make you feel how does that wanting to explode make you feel well i don't explode and that makes me feel like hopeless for example how does hopeless make you feel you keep asking this very simple question how does this make me feel until you get down to the, the bottom of this these layers of feeling you come to a deep feeling it might be hopeless might be lost whatever it is the next question is how does my body react how does my body react when i'm feeling frustrated explosive but i don't explode and hopeless how does my body react shut down i just shut down feel blocked in my throat body contracted that's the pattern you don't need to remember the early childhood memory you can hear it here and now as i said anywhere that you break the chain anywhere that you break the intergenerational pattern of trauma it's broken and you heal yourself and you heal your ancestors and you heal your descendants and you heal the collective consciousness as well So polar lines of chills running down my neck, arms and legs. Okay, so one of the, you see the underlying reality, as I said at the beginning, is that we are magical energetic beings. Yeah, and all we are is energy. Our body is a particular formation of energies that come together for a certain amount of time. And that time is called our lifetime. And during our lifetime, we feel certain feelings and all those feelings are, are waves of energy flowing through our body. We feel emotions. They're just waves of energy flowing through our body. We have thoughts, which are waves of energy that arise from deep within us. And sometimes that's not even what they are. They're thoughts that are in the collective and we pull them in and we think them thinking that they're our own thoughts. All there is, is energy. And when we have all of these stuck emotions in our body our energy is stuck we get sick it's the ultimate cause of sickness not only biological and physical sickness but emotional unwellness mental um, health problems also it's all just stuck energy one of the things that happens when, when you're on the healing path is the energy starts to flow which means that you start to know who you really are. So it's wonderful that you feel this, Perla, this lines of chills running down your neck and your arm. That's energy moving that you couldn't feel before because it was blocked. Sometimes it feels like a chill. Sometimes it feels electrical. Sometimes it feels like a warm current. Sometimes you feel like a shiver. Sometimes your body will move spontaneously. Um, and if somebody's watching, they might think you're crazy, but you just tell them, no, I'm all good. I'm getting to know myself better. <laughs> um, it's different for everybody, but it's just energy. So that's good. Jeff, it's a Perla, the key is the reaction. Yes. Yeah. That is the key, the instinctive reaction. It's instinctive. And in a way, this process of healing trauma begins in the head. You remember or you contemplate the pattern. It's a thought. It goes down into the heart. How does it make me feel? How does this pattern make me feel? Sad. Okay. How does that sadness make me feel? And then you come to a deeper feeling. It makes me feel really desolate. How does desolate make me feel? It makes me feel completely helpless. And you come to a very deep feeling, and that's more in the gut than it is in the heart. And then the reaction is instinctive, and our instinctive center is the body mind which is the gut the deep 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 down in the gut that's the body mind so the process is to go from the the head mind to the heart mind into the body mind where the decision was made the reaction to the trauma and then you release it simply by acknowledging acknowledgement is very
To acknowledge something means to recognize it, but also to accept it. It's okay. And this acceptance really is love. With this love, we integrate. We integrate what was frozen, what was contracted. We allow it to open and to flow. It expands. This is love, expansion. Fear is contraction. So what we're doing is we're going from the head to the heart, to the body, finding the reaction, the decision that was made. How do I be safe? Freeze, contract. Don't need to do that anymore. I can expand now. I can be free. I can follow my heart. I can move towards love from fear. And this is the release. Jennifer, you're welcome. Um, Nastia, CEO. Oh, the body mind is the CEO. Yeah, yeah. Nastia, I've been working with Nastia for a long time. She's in my online community. And she's well. We're like, a, if you use the analogy of a business, a corporation, we are, the human being is like a business, you know, and there are different parts of us, different aspects of us. You've got the secretary and you've got the workers, you've got the, you know, the organs in the body doing different functions. And really, the CEO is the gut because everything begins and ends in the gut. All energy comes into our body here. Life begins and ends there. The umbilical cord, the gut, um, is the, the powerhouse. That's the CEO. Why? Because that's the wisdom. Our body wisdom is in our gut because that part of our being is ancient and primal. This frontal cortex, the thinking part of us, is a newborn baby in evolutionary terms. It's only developed within the last maybe 10,000 or 100,000 years, I'm not sure. But the gut mind carries a wisdom that is beyond time. It knows. So I think that's what Nastya is saying, the gut is Good morning, Hannah. You can watch it later. It's a pleasure, Tina. Okay. Um, I'm going to wrap this up now or very soon. If there are more questions, jump in now because otherwise there won't be time. I just want to remind you that this process that I have shared with you is more tricky than most things and Quite often what we need is some support to go through it in the form of somebody that knows what they're doing, working with trauma. So take this and do with it what you will. Use it as much as you can. It's free and it can be very helpful. If you get stuck, then reach out to someone that can guide you through the process. Usually it takes us on our own to do this process a lot longer than if somebody is helping with us, helping us with it, okay? Um, and you can also do this work, you know, if you have somebody, it might be a partner or it might be a friend, but somebody that is on the same page, you have the same kind of values and you both want to do the work. One thing that's very useful is to just speak to each other. You can do this process, you can support each other in this process, but it's also useful to simply say out loud what happened, you know, um, the other day I shared with Kimba, I talked through my whole life story and it's the first time I've ever done that really that systematically, that comprehensively. And it's a very beautiful thing to do. You always discover stuff that you hadn't realized before about yourself. It's very healing. So, um, tomorrow, okay. Tamar is asking what about fear and feeling alone, helpless and unprotected, unsafe when parents were fighting when eight to nine years old, this came up just earlier and the vocal expression and screaming came up and released the feelings of pressure in my chest. Wonderful. Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. <laughs> That's wonderful. That was a trauma. You know, when your parents are fighting and you're eight or nine years old, if you sense there's a real violence in it. And a lot of our parents had a lot of contempt for each other, a lot of resentment. You know, they said they loved each other, but they didn't even love themselves. So when they fought, it was scary, you know, it was very um, destabilizing and traumatic. So for sure, that can be a very serious, for some people, that can be a very serious trauma. 
um, you say that it came up and the vocal expression and screaming came up and the feeling of pressure was released from your chest. So that suggests to me that you healed at least a big chunk of it, which is wonderful. Um, I need to tell you also that when, when, when you do this work and you have a big release, something happens internally which is very very powerful and you need to be aware of how to how to proceed after that so tamara had a big release somebody else a number of you i can feel had uh, a lot of stuff going on. that being the case for you i want you to do three things for the next three days and they're very simple things and you can all do them one is rest as much as you possibly can you will probably if you had a release you'll probably feel tired sleepy drained not bad but just like you, your body will want to rest now the reason for this is that the body's been holding tension tightness contraction for a very long time a very long time and when it is released the body has to go through a recalibration process. It's almost like the body mind says, wow, I didn't even realize I was holding that tension. I've been holding it for so long, constantly, that it was just a way of life. Only now that it's released, do I feel, it feels almost like you're ungrounded because of it, almost like you're untethered, which is literally true because your body has changed now physically and energetically this kind of healing very often people become much more flexible after doing this kind of work their breathing changes suddenly areas of the lungs open up that they couldn't breathe into before the body changes physically biologically but also energetically and emotionally and mentally something is unwinding within you and you need to take three days to honor that and to allow space for that integration and that process to unfold as naturally and as effortlessly and as beautifully as you can. So rest as much as you can. If you feel sleepy in the afternoon or whenever, lie down and have a nap. Or just close your eyes and breathe. Rest, rest, rest. Get as much sleep as you can. That's the first thing. The second thing is drink as much water as you possibly can. Try to drink three to four liters per day for the next three days because our bodies are mostly water. And as they recalibrate, a lot of water will be flushed out and released, possibly by night sweats, possibly just through the, the pee. And the more good water, the more fresh living water you can flush through the body for the next three days, the more easy you make it for the body to go through this recalibration process. And the third thing is eat well. And I don't mean eat what you think is good food. I mean, listen to your body and ask it, what, what do you need? What do you most need right now? And listen to the answer and feed your body what it's calling out for. Because again, when we do this kind of healing work, we are suddenly in a different space internally and biologically, and the body will call for things that might not normally you you might not normally eat so eat well drink loads of water get loads of sleep and rest hi tori good to see you too kind of good to have you here and my family Friday two more videos like this tomorrow we're going to go deep into what is anger what is rage what is hatred what is irritation what is frustration what is annoyance what is the real root of these emotions and feelings it's an instinct and the work we're going to do tomorrow is going to be about really integrating that instinct um, and expressing it and it's going to be a huge huge bridge for a lot of people to power, to your own personal power. And Friday, the same, but for grief and pain and sadness, um, which will unlock 
in many people a great deal of space and open up the possibility to live and to express much more freely. So, um, is there any last? Yeah, thanks, Johanna. It's good to have that um, confirmation. Thanks for being here. So, I'm going to wrap it up. Sending lots of love to everybody. Bye bye. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Feel free to share this, feel free to come back to it. And um, of course, I'll just say if you'd like to work with me in an ongoing way, which I highly recommend, <laughs> uh, there's a number of possibilities. I run 12 week courses and I have an online Sangha community, which is very beautiful. So have a look at my website, which Kimber shared the link to. So lots of love. Have a beautiful day, night, morning, wherever you are. And hopefully see you tomorrow.